Hi, and welcome to the first episode in the GraphPad series of tutorials. In this episode, we'll go over the basic interface of GraphPad, different graph types, and opening new sheets. So when you first open up GraphPad, you'll see a welcome window, and you'll be shown the various data tables and graph types. Throughout the tutorial series, we'll be looking at each of the six different types, and for the most part, we'll be using the tutorial data sets provided by GraphPad. These are great um, to learn about the different data types and the different analyses you can perform using the software. I really recommend you try them out yourselves, or you can just follow along the tutorials with them. So first, let's look at the different uh, data table formats. Really, choosing the right type of data table for your analysis is critical to making your analysis run smoothly. Solely choosing the data table based on the graph you want won't really help uh, because different data types, different data tables, that is, can give the same graph. An example of that would be uh, the bar graph. There are many ways of uh, getting different bar graphs. So there are a total of six uh, types of data tables in PRISM. And if you find out that the data table you chose is not suited for your analysis, you can always change it. Uh, you can go to the menu and uh, the change menu, that is, and the bottom left icon is the one that you're going to want to take. Now we'll go over the six types of data tables. First, we have the XY table. Um, each point is defined by both an X and a Y value. And you can only enter numbers since these are continuous values. This kind of data are often fit with uh, linear or nonlinear regression. And we'll, we'll do tutorials using the data sets for, for those analyses. Then we have column tables. So as you can see, each column defines a group. Uh, the classical example could be control versus treated, but you can have uh, more than two categories. And these allow you to do t-tests and analysis of variance or ANOVA. Group tables have two grouping variables. Each is defined by either rows or columns. In this example, uh, one grouping variable, male versus female, is defined by rows, and the other one control versus treated is defined by the columns. Next are contingency tables. They're quite tricky uh, since they look like the group tables in many ways. However, they're used to tabulate the actual number of subjects or observations that fall into the categories defined by the rows and the columns of a table. So they're often used to calculate the relative risk and odds ratio, maybe even the sensitivity and specificity of a diagnostic test, for example and can be used to analyze prospective, retrospective, and cross-sectional studies. Survival tables are used to enter information for each subject. PRISM can then compute the percent survival at each time point and plot a Kaplan-Meier survival plot. Um, each row is a different subject. The X column represents the time elapsed, so in days or years, it's up to you. And the rest of the columns represent the experimental group uh, the subjects belong to. Finally, we have the parts of a whole tables, and these are used to ask uh, about what fraction of the total is each value. So this is often used or represented by pie charts, uh, but there are a bunch of other representations um, once you decide to take that type of uh, data table. So this was just a general overview of each of the different data table types, and we'll develop them further in upcoming episodes. Honestly, the best way to learn is really to try out the different examples. Uh, if you need more information, I've posted some of the links to the GraphPad documentation in the description. Uh, alternatively, if you want to know more about navigating PRISM, you can click on the PRISM Tips button at the bottom left to access the documentation. Now I'll just finish presenting this welcome window, and that'll be it for this episode. So below we have uh, the opening a file button. It's pretty self-explanatory. It shows the most recent PRISM files uh, you've accessed, so it'll make it easier to find them in a hurry. The Lab Archives menu allows you to store and save your analyses on a cloud-based system. So it's free to sign up, um, totally up to you. It might be good to keep backups if, if you wish. Um, there's a, a method to save them to the Lab Archives uh, within the different PRISM sheets. Um, the other option is cloning a graph. So this allows you to keep your graphs consistent and depending on the analyses, it may, the analysis may actually be retained. Sometimes it's, it's, um, it's impossible because of uh, the way the analysis was done. 
finally, there's the graph portfolio, which just shows you different representations and options you have for graphing. It's organized in a similar way to the tutorial data sets, so it's quite easy to learn. Uh, you can just open each one and see how it was done. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've learned something new. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment down below. Uh, we're all quite new to YouTube, and we can definitely use some feedback. Next episode, we'll go over the actual layout using an example data set, and we'll see the different graphing options available to us. Hope to see you there.